Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Frank Talks Money. Guys, I got an interesting treat for you guys today. I'm going to be doing what I some going to be doing this new theme on my on my channel called financial interview, where I will just be inter interviewing people on how they deal with money, what they've learned about money, how they deal with their money. You know, do they have debt? Do they invest? Things of that nature. Just so, just so I can try to just talk to more people and just get a a feel of where they're at financially. That way it's a learning experience for you guys and me to see what other people are doing. You know, maybe we can incorporate some of those things into our lives to help better our finance. Today with me today, I have Mr. Bradley Cooper. What's up, y'all? His real name is not really Cooper, it's Bradley Coppler, but I call him Bradley Cooper because he kind of, to me, kind of looks like Bradley Cooper, the actor. I wish I was Bradley Cooper. <laughs> so guys, what I want to do is I met Bradley two and a half weeks ago. Um, I accepted a, a new position with, with my company and I'm doing some training um, with my company down in, uh, near St. Louis, Missouri. And Bradley happens to be my trainer. And since I've been here, all I've talked about with Bradley is about money, investing, saving, getting out of debt. Is that correct, Bradley? That is true. That is true. So what I want to do today is just, just ask Bradley some questions about where he is financially. So sit back, guys, enjoy the video, and then leave, leave a comment and let me know what you thought about the video. I really appreciate it, guys. So Bradley, tell us about your life growing up. How was money growing up with your mom, your dad? Um, so tell me, did you guys take vacations? Was, was money tight? Just tell us about your, your young adult growing up around money. Oh, man. <clears throat> I lived with my grandparents from the time I was born. Okay. Uh, my dad was really in and out of the picture. Uh, mom worked odd end job, cashiering, you know, waiting tables, etc. Uh, my mom moved out when I was four. I ended up living with my grandparents. Money was tight. Our biggest vacation was probably to Six Flags once a summer. Yeah, I can relate to that. So uh, <laughs> that was probably that, me too. That was fun to me. I mean, be able to go out for a couple of days and just ride roller coasters. So I uh, really enjoyed that. But no, we wasn't we wasn't rich by any means. We lived paycheck to paycheck. But you know, what we had is something that we valued, so. You know, that, that's kind of like my my same um, story also as I was growing up. You know, I, there was pretty much no vacation whatsoever. It might have been a, an amusement park here or there that was close to home. But, out in Michigan, but there was really, there, there was really no money, no vacation. You know, I actually started working when I was 15 years old was my first job. Minimum wage was three thirty-five an hour. <laughs> so when did you, when did you start working? What was your first job? Uh, my first job was with my grandparents. They uh, ran a kitchen at a mom pop uh, restaurant. Uh, I worked okay. under the table doing dishes for them from the time I was 11 till I was probably 15. Okay. Um, got my first job when I was 16. Uh, my very first job was at the hospital. I worked there for a couple weeks as a 16 year old kid. Um, boss wasn't really friendly. Um, so I <laughs> left there, um, went and I worked at a mom and pop place washing dishes again. Do you know how much you were making per hour back then? Oh man, I was making 825. 825. 825. <laughs> I was making three thirty-five my first job. So I guess I tell you how I probably just aged myself there. <laughs> just to see where wages are at now compared to when I started working, it's uh, it's it's a difference. Yeah. But you you see people wanted to work when it was eight twenty-five versus now you're getting paid fourteen dollars an hour and staffing around the world is just it's in crisis. I mean. Oh, for sure, for sure. Since COVID, the uh, the job industry and and the economic uh, surrounding around that has been. Troubling. Yeah, we've experienced that um, a lot even where, because I'm, I'm up in Indiana, and like I said, me and Bradley work for the same company, but even I'm five hours away from home, and the economic conditions are the same. Nobody wants to work anywhere. Nobody wants to work. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're all going through it. Nobody wants to work, and every, everything changed right during COVID. That's when everything changed. It's like after COVID, nobody wanted to work anymore. It's like, I've, I've been wondering how people pay their bills. How do they how do they pay their bills? I just can't figure that one out. I ask myself the same question every day. How do how do people think that it's okay to not be able to work? Exactly. Um, you know, I'm I'm not one person that likes things given to me. I would rather work for what I have and be able to cherish and and be proud of what I've worked for. Exactly. So dealing with money, Bradley. So when as a as a younger adult, when you started work, how did you? deal with your money? Did you just spend it recklessly? Anybody teach you about any, any trying to save money? What type of money lessons did you get as a younger adult? Like, like in your 18, 19, 20, what did you know about money? I didn't really get any advice 
on money when I was younger. It was, it was more you work for your money, you spend it how you want to and, and enjoy life. You know, I had a girlfriend mm -hmm. at the time, friends, you know, I'd go out, hang out with them. We'd go eat, out to eat, you know, movies, whatever the case may be, you know, and then I played video games in my spare time, you know, mm -hmm. when I had little downtime from work, so it kept me out of trouble, and that's really how I spent my money. Yeah, that, that was kind of me, too. When I was growing up, I was pretty much told how to, um, like my grandfather, in my later teens, I was being a knucklehead. My, my mother sent me to live with my father first, and then me and my father was, you know, butted head, and then my grandfather lived across town. So then I went to my grandfather's, and, and when I was like 17, and my grandfather was always a saver, but he never taught me about investing. But he, said he would always say, save some money, save some money, always save some money for a rainy day and things like that. So I always saved money and got that from my grandfather, but I was never taught to save money. And to be quite honest with you, I don't even think he really knew anything about that himself to even be able to teach it to me. Um, just about save, save some money for a rainy day, always have some money, you know, like that. But as I was growing up, I always saved some money, but I spent recklessly also because it's like younger adult, you know, trying to have fun, trying to impress women, trying to impress your friends, yep. trying to buy the, buy the latest this, buy the latest that, until I found out that as I grew up and got into my late, late 30s that just, that just wasn't the way to live. You know, so yeah, I, I know exactly. I know exactly where you're coming from in that, in that aspect of it. So right now, financially, so how do you think you're doing? How do you think you're doing financially right now? I live comfortable. You live comfortable. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've got my car payments mm -hmm. and you know the miscellaneous bills that everybody else has. Yeah. But you know, I do have money left over to be able to you know go out and buy what I want or. Yeah. You know, give my daughter what she wants because I do that quite often. I probably spoil her more than myself. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's really where I'm at financially. Um, down the road, you know, like you know, we had talked about today. You know, I I do want to be able to have money to where I can send her into college and yeah. and be better than than I am today. I will. I want I want to bring this up real quick, guys. Today I've been knowing this guy, just knowing him, knowing him. Didn't know him from Adam and Eve from two and a half weeks ago, and today just with us talking and. And uh, me talking about money and investing and the importance of it, we actually, he actually opened up a Roth IRA today while we were at work. So I'm pretty proud of that. Pretty proud of that. That's, that's, um, that's great. That is great. So did you, so Brian, did you know prior to me coming down here and talking about investing, did you know anything about investing? Has anybody ever brought up investing? You should invest. Tell me, tell me about that. No, nobody ever talked to me about investing. I didn't really know anything about it. I mean, you always hear about it, you know, on TV. Yeah. People investing in stock markets and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always thought, man, I'm, if the stock market crashes, you lose your money. Why mm -hmm. would you do that? Mm -hmm. There's no safety in it. Yeah. So I was always told not to do anything in, in that aspect. Um, but the only time I ever really saved money was when my, we were pregnant with my daughter. Okay. And, you know, I had a shoebox and I, mm -hmm. you know, used to take $500 out of my bonus checks and uh -huh. just set it in a rubber band, you know, and put it in the closet. Those shoeboxes under, under, the, under, the, under the bed. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. That's, that's really where, where the only saving I've ever had, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm so used to just spoiling my kids and, and spending. And, and spending. spending. Guys, I, guys, I want to say real quick, while we were opening up this account, he's on, we're on the account, we're in the Vanguard account, and he says, is this real? Is this real? Is this really going to work? This is why we have really got to teach and talk, you know, about investing to our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our family, because people think the stock market is a scam, and they, they think, oh, I'm going to put my money in, and I'm going to lose all my money. That is not the case. We have to talk about these things. You know, we have to give out this information to people we know, people we love, people we care about, because investing for the long haul is such a difference maker in your lives. I can attest that. I'm an average guy. I was down here, been down this guy, have only known me two and a half weeks. And just because of me talking about investing and saving and the importance of it, he opened up a Roth IRA. That is huge. That is huge. That's what my quest on, on my YouTube channel was about, teaching and giving knowledge. They always say, and I fir firmly believe this. They say people come in your life for a reason. And I, it was a reason that I took this promotion and came down and, and met this young man, good young man. But no one had ever talked to him about investing 
or compound interest. You knew nothing about compound interest till I till I talked about it, right? Nope. Nothing about you knew nothing, nothing about, about it. Knew nothing about and how old are you? 29. 29. 29 years old and knew nothing about compound interest or really about investing. And that's what I'm saying, guys. I didn't learn any of this till I was middle 30s because no one had taught me this till my middle 30s. But I'm glad I was able to talk to him about this at the age of 29 because the earlier you start, the more money, the more time your money has to grow and snowball over time. So, so let me ask you this. So like right now, if you had a thousand dollar emergency, could you take care of it with cash without using a credit card? No. No? See, that's where 70% of Americans are right now. Because we are so used to just, I'm gonna be honest with you, we are so used, we've been brainwashed to go to work, spend, and just recycle, rinse and repeat. Go to work, pay bills, spend. Go to work, pay bills, spend. It's just a never ending cycle. It's a never ending cycle. Like, it's a rat race. It's pretty much a rat race, you know? So, what do you know? Who taught you about credit? So, I met my wife when I was 20. 20? And I opened my first credit card through Shields. Okay. Um, I'm a big Nike fan. Okay. And I wanted this specific outfit. Uh huh. And she's like, well, you can open this credit card up and, you know, you can buy this outfit here. Okay. You know, you can pay payments on it. You know, it'll build your credit and things like that. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that sounds great. Because at that time, I was working a minimum wage job okay. at a retirement home. Um, I was serving the elderly, you know, taking food out to them, you know, mm -hmm. making their drinks, etc. Yeah. And it intrigued me to the point where, like, I can pay for this and help myself at the same time. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And we, and we did it. And I just, I opened up an Apple card, you know, okay. credit card. I, I did a Disney credit card, you know, and miscellaneous other credit mm -hmm. cards, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's really where it started. So right now, so what are your thoughts on credit? Um, do you... Do you think where you're at on credit? Do you think you got good credit, bad credit, average credit? Where do you think you're sitting at? I think I got good credit. Good credit? I'm probably in the 600s at okay. least. Okay. But it's probably about average, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, we all can't be rock stars, right? <laughs> you know, once you get to, once you get to 7, 7, 20, 7, 30, that's when you probably consider it great. But you're still building it. And, and, I, and one thing I want everybody to understand, and even yourself, is that Credit is, is a tool, and um, and I just, the video I dropped last Saturday, it basically said how I feel like a credit score should actually be called a debt score, because it rates you pretty much on how, you know, the probability of you paying back debt, that's your rating, you know, which I believe is, is a scam. It should be called a, a debt score because that's what you're really doing because you're just taking out debt. You buy something, you pay you, when you pay your car off. When you pay your car off, your credit score is gonna go down. It's like, what? My credit score goes down because I paid my car off? That's exactly what's going to happen when you pay your car off. And then, let's just say you go out and take out new credit. Your score goes up. See, the system is rigged to keep us in debt. It's rigged to keep us in debt. We have to be smart and use credit to our advantage. Like, like myself, I use a credit card. I'm going to make sure I pay it off the next month because I do not want the bank to get any free money from me whatsoever in interest. None. No free, you're not getting any free money, you know. And I, because in my opinion, I can like, because I use a high yield savings account. So I use my credit card. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I get 4.5% through Capital One online savings account. So when I use my credit card, so that money, I, I, I got it down to a science. I know exactly when my billing cycle ends. I know exactly when it starts. I know when it ends. And then my bill is going to be due probably 28 days later. Right. So I know I pretty much got 50 days for that money to sit in my high yield savings account because the, it's getting a nice interest rate right now because the interest rates right now, the Fed got them jacked up. So they're giving us more money and interest on the dollar. So I know I can say, put that money in the bank in my high yield and get as much for the bank for the buck and then pull it out if I use a credit card, pay the credit card off. If, if I use a credit card. Because believe me, I was in credit card debt before and I paid it off um, with my ex-wife. We did the whole debt snowballs they it's a plan from a financial guru they call dave ramsey he has a tv show on Sirius xm i believe and that's and i was actually on a long drive to go help uh, another um another um travel stop to um that, that was in trouble that's how i came across him and the whole debt snowball paying off a of debt paying off debt getting out of you know getting get my credit together you know getting out of debt paying for things in cash investing, uh, having an emergency fund. I actually learned all that on a drive to Minnesota. I was just in my car, a lot of windshield time, 
and um, came across, I was like, you know what? The plan just intrigued me so much because we were just, me and my wife, ex-wife were just doing the normal thing, just working, using credit cards, carrying balances. You know, we had, I think, one car payment because she, she had a, a company car. And I was like, you know what? I want to get out of debt. I'm tired of just going through this revolving cycle of just paying off debt, working, paying off debt, working, paying off debt. I was like, you know, how much more money could we have if we started saving and investing our money, you know? And luckily, I think it was meant for me to come across that program because I've been out of debt, been debt free for about 10 years now, you know? So yeah, I love it. I love, I love not having any debt. It just gives me so much freedom, freedom. So what's your whole thoughts around debt? Since, since, since I've been down here and we've been communicating, What's your thoughts around debt? It's it's really an eye opener. Uh -huh. um, it makes me want to change some of the ways that you know I'm either spending money or mm -hmm. just involving my money with. Yeah, I definitely want to invest, and that's something we did today. And I think investments from now on is something I'm going to continue to do. Definitely to set myself up for later in life. You know, whether it's 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Exactly. So that way I can you know just be able to relax and mm -hmm. not have to worry about hey, you know I got to do a job that you know, you may not necessarily want to do. Exactly. You know, you might do it like, like, we, like we both had conversations. We don't want to do what we're doing forever. We don't want to do it. And one of the ways you would get tired and have to do it is because you're in debt and you have no money saved. You have nothing invested. You have no assets. So you have to work. Absolutely. You have to work. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do you that. You know, you got, especially our, our careers is like high stress. So, you know, we have to, if you're in debt, I do not want to be chained to a job because I have debt to pay off. Like, I go out and buy a new car. I got this car here. It's like, man, I cannot quit this job because I got to pay for this car. But that car is doing nothing but taking you from point A to point B and sitting in the driveway or sitting in the garage. Yep. But you got to work to pay that sucker off. That's I, I don't want to live that way. I do not want to live that way. No. I, as I get up in age right now, I'm actually trying to own less things right now not own more things because I don't want to be tied to things. Like right now in my life, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying my life with experiences. So Later down the road, I want to be able to enjoy my life and, and know that I, I can be comfortable with mm -hmm. whatever may come my way, with whether it be a you know, car breaking down yeah. or something to repair on the house or you know my kids needing some funds yep. just for something that may happen in their life. Yeah, um, That's... that's where we're at and be prepared to be able to be able to help them out absolutely and help yourself out if an emergency happens you know and i i also look at and we talked about this today too is is where is staffing going to be how is the employment going to be 10 15 20 25 years down the road yep. you know i'm going to be in my 40s and 50s by that time am i really going to want to you know endure some of the things that are going to come through there exactly and and i think every person in the world you know probably thinks that way especially yep when they're in a position like we are. Yep, because you don't want to be worried, especially as we get up in age, because like right now I'm 52. So if I was to lose my child right now, I've set myself up. I, you know, I better live my life, nothing, nothing's gonna change. But what if I was 52, lose my job with nothing, with no backup, no money, no investments, no investments, and then who's gonna hire me? They're gonna be thinking I can't do this, this guy's up, up in age right now. You know, because I mean, ageism is a thing out here, ageism. And um, how do I know someone might not pass on me because of my age? You know, what you kind know? of health problems does he have? He's exactly. up there. Can he, is he reliability? Exactly. Um, is, he, is he a liability? Exactly. So, exactly. you know, a lot of those things factor in, into the decision making that we made today. Yep. You know, going into that, that 401k and, and mm -hmm. the Roth and everything because of those decisions down the road. Yep. Because a lot of things could factor into those. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. We're going to get ready to wrap up. What made you, you just met me two and a half weeks ago. What, what made you listen to what I was saying to start that Roth? A lot, a lot has factored into to the decision, really. Um, just kind of seeing how the world's going right now. Mm -hmm. um, seeing all, all the chaotic and, and stress, you know, my parents went through. My grandparents are currently going through. Mm -hmm. and the prices of everything just increasing. And then they're only going to increase even more down yep. the road um, as we as the world goes on. Yeah. Um, so at that point is you know minimum wage is going to go up, of course. Yep. 
But um, is jobs is jobs going to keep up with that? You got to have you got to have other avenues for money. And I don't think so. Yep. I no, I, no. I think companies aren't going to be able to forfeit a lot of the salary and and labor that they're going to need to be able to run their business. Yep. And I foresee a lot of the companies going to you know electronics. Yep. Yep. You know everything. AI. Like, yep. AI yep. And, and you know systems yep. that that they you know integrate in their you know their corporations and their their franchises, etc. Yep. Um, so I, you know, I got to think about that too. Yep. You know, what is what is 10, 15, 20 years down the road going to look like for me? Yeah. Or is it is it going to be something where they, you know, it's all systemated? Yep. Yep. You know, I, I can't I can't go on a, on a maybe that exactly. yeah things are going to be the same. See, I'm a firm believer. You have to take your you have to take your financial future into your hands. You have to because as you said, inflation. Inflation is still going to increase. It may have peaked now, but it's still going to increase two to two and a half, maybe even three percent every single year. So the value of our dollar is going down every single year. Every year. And if you don't, and if all you have to count on is just a job that's not keeping up with inflation, and you don't have any other assets to pull from in retirement or even five years from now, you know. But if you got some assets. If things get a little tight that you can go grab and tap into to help you weather a storm, that's, that's awesome. But to be caught with just your job and no other access to any type of funds, something happened, you're just screwed. Absolutely. You're just screwed. You're just screwed. You are just literally screwed. A couple of other things that really factored in is, you know, you kind of showed me, you know, when you started and mm -hmm. what you're at now. Mm -hmm. And to see that growth just in two years of you know, having a share, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, man, I, you know, I could use that. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money just sitting in your account that mm -hmm. you have. Yep. And when you, you showed me that it, it really opened up my eyes and it, that was part of my decision too, mm -hmm. uh, was the other factor that, that came in and I want to be able to be a, sitting on that kind of money too. Yeah. You, you can see he's just not talking out of his ass. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not because. No, know, me, me. Oh yeah. When I was talking well, about it. You know, ab absolutely not. I just. You know, I, I want to be able to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be, you know, when I'm older, not have to depend on a, on a job to necessarily be able to live. Yep, yep, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And that's why I go, I'm glad I got with the program because, I mean, I'll be honest, man. It's like I tell everybody, you know, if, in case this is your first time on the channel, like I tell everybody, back in 2007, I lost my father. I was so damn broke at that time. My father, my ex-wife was on my way, was on her way to take my dad to a chemo appointment, like 35 miles from where I lived, and my truck broke down at that time in 07. It cost me $600 to get my truck fixed. I did not have the money to get my truck fixed. And then he died two weeks later, and I had to make funeral arrangements. And uh, I had to borrow money to go make those funeral arrangements. I was that broke. At that time, I owed the IRS money. I owed back child support because I was young, dumb, and stupid back in the days. Because when he passed away, he was 35. Because I was young, dumb, and stupid trying to dodge child support. But you, we make mistakes. I uh, owed the IRS money. I had shit in collections. Um, and at that moment, that was probably my lowest moment ever in my life financially when I didn't even have money to fix my truck. So talking about not having an emergency fund or a thousand bucks in case of an emergency, I didn't have a pot to piss in. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I couldn't even, my dad passed away and I couldn't even, I had to borrow money to get my truck fixed to even go make the funeral arrangement. So that... That was my wake up call at that point in time. Cause I think about that sometime now. It's just like I just made a video a couple a couple weeks ago about having access to money. And I my daily driver two three weeks ago I was on my way to work, and it broke down on a highway, and uh, I thought it was gonna be about a thousand bucks, but it ended up almost costing me two thousand dollars to fix. I was more mad because I was inconvenienced that it broke down. I wasn't mad that the car broke down. I was just mad that it broke down. I was on my way to work. Cause now I gotta stand there. Wait on a tow truck, but I knew I was financially good to take care of whatever whatever the price is going to be. I had my the tow truck driver take me back to my house because it was only like 20 miles away uh, from when I jumped on the highway. Jumped in, jumped in my weekend car, went to work. I was more mad that I was inconvenienced. I wasn't mad that it really broke down. I was just like, you know what, it sucks. But it was a comfort, a level of comfort to know, well, whatever's going to be, I know I can pay for it. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to worry about it. Something like that, almost a $2,000 repair for probably 60, 60, 70% of the population would have probably threw somebody 
in a financial tailspin. Cause to have to come up with two grand when you don't, when it just, just happens out of nowhere, car breaks down, it's gonna be two grand to fix. What? Most people would have to go probably take out a loan, pay their loan, get online, do one of these high um, online of loan places, use a credit card, take on more debt. But I was just glad to be in the financial position to take care of it and not have to worry about it. And when, and when I think about that to 2007, when my dad passed away and I was so broke, I couldn't see straight and, and dead and owed everybody and their mama money. It's just like, it's, it's amazing what 15 years has, has done in my financial life, just by getting out of debt and, and investing my money. That's amazing. That's I wish amazing. I would have invested a lot earlier. But you know what? Life. You're young. You, you got years, brother. You got years. Like, and, it could, and like I explained to you, you started out so early, you don't have to invest a, a lot of money like I did. Because I started off late in my late 30s. All amounts now just going to snowball for years to come. You got a lot of time. So don't even worry about it. Just stay consistent and keep investing. That's the plan. Yep. So, guys. You know, I want to thank Bradley for sitting down and being my guinea pig. You know, I want to do more of these type of um, um, videos to, like I said, just sit down so we can learn from other people, learn from their mistakes and things of that nature, so learn what we can do better, um, listen to how other people are doing financially in this world. So I, I really want to thank Bradley. Thank you, sir. Well, I appreciate you, it. Appreciate I appreciate you. it, man. I got one more day to go with Bradley. Tomorrow will be my last day working for him. Then I'm back in back to Indiana to start my new adventure at work. So I want to really want to thank you guys for tuning into this video. Remember to like the video, guys, share the video, and most important, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Frank Talks Money. And with that, guys, remember, financial decisions you make today will impact your financial life tomorrow. That's it. Frank Talks Money, Frank and Bradley, we are out. Later, y'all.